uh, creeds, cultists, code, and community. So we're going to take a look at those uh, today. So the problem with anti-religious atheism, uh, herein referred to simply as atheism, uh, is that religion is the problem. Okay? Uh, Hitchens has said that religion is derived from the bawling and fearful infancy of our species, not something to be desired today. Uh, Dawkins writes in his book, The God Delusion, that there's no more room to be a deeply religious non-believer. So he would say to those friendly atheists, those non-religious atheists, uh, not anti-religious atheists, that you really can't hold that position anymore. It's, it's a foolish position because religion really is the problem and we need to do something about it or we just need to be aware that it is a problem. Um, atheists will say that Fundamentalism and fanaticism aren't the only things that they criticize. Uh, you know, some Christians will say, well, it's just the fundamentalists and just the fanatics. Or Muslims will say, well, it's just the fanatic Muslims that really cause the problems. But um, atheists, uh, militant atheists, angry atheists, um, evangelical atheists, anti-religious atheists will say, uh, it's not fundamentalism or fanaticism. Religion itself is the problem. Uh, Dawkins says, even mild and moderate religion uh, will have those fanatic elements in it and will lead very quickly uh, to uh, religious fur and religious violence. So he says that mild and moderate uh, believers are just as bad as fanatic believers. So their solution, according to Prothero, is to flush this poison, religion, out of our system, the human system. Um, it's quote-unquote the end of the gentleman's agreement. There's long been this kind of gentleman's agreement uh, that you may not, or you may hold your belief, I may not believe it as well, but you know what, I will let you be religious, okay? Um, three things blew that agreement up, uh, according to Prothero on page 320. Uh, the U.S. religious right began in the late 1970s to put God uh, to partisan political purposes, okay? This prompted atheists with different political views to go public with their criticisms of God think. Second, uh, Muslim immigration into Europe, which is edging toward 10% of the population in France and 5% of the population in the Netherlands, has caused uh, the very atheist countries in Europe um, and the atheist elite in Europe to say, hey, we can no longer just say religion's okay. This is changing our world. And then also, uh, Quran quoting terrorists, um, and there are many actions, including uh, the very significant action on September 11th, 2011. Uh, you know, four days after September 11th, Richard Dawkins published an article in The Guardian talking about how religion is the problem, that it's not just terrorists, but even mild-mannered Muslims that uh, inherently have this evil lurking inside of them. And so he, he very much went on the attack against religion. And there was a lot of hubbub about this. A lot of people say that was the birth of the new atheism or militant atheism um, you know, some people would argue with that, that it was already around, but certainly this is one of those big events um, that people recognize uh, that atheism kind of went, hey, there's a problem. Uh, I want to quote um, Dawkins from his article that he published in The Guardian. He writes, many of us saw religion as harmless nonsense. This gentleman's agreement, right? Uh, beliefs might lack all supporting evidence, but we thought, if people need a crutch for consolation, where's the harm? September 11th changed all that. Revealed faith is not harmless nonsense. It can be lethally dangerous nonsense. Dangerous because it gives people unshakable confidence in their own righteousness. Dangerous because it gives them false courage to kill themselves, which automatically removes normal barriers to killing others. And dangerous because we have all bought into a weird respect, which uniquely protects religion from normal criticism. Let's now stop being so damned respectful. Okay. So now uh, atheism kind of turns to say religious belief and, and religious tolerance are something to be confronted rather than to be confirmed uh, or de facto confirmed. Um, the solution, therefore, uh, to the religious problem is deconversion. Uh, we don't want to convert people but deconvert them from religion. Uh, lift the veil, as Dawkins has written. Uh, it's hoping that people no longer believe in a god or gods. Again, they can do this actively or they can do this passively and just hope that through reason, through knowledge, people will be deconverted. The technique 
usually has something to do with rational argument, scientific proof, and intellectual honesty on behalf of atheists. Uh, they rely on confrontation, sometimes direct confrontation with people of beliefs, uh, condescension, uh, maybe just talking down about people with religious beliefs, talking about they're not intelligent, um, that they simply don't understand the world, that they're not very scientific. And in doing so, through confrontation and spoken condescension, they hope to create consternation. Uh, you know, they hope to take away people's confidence in their belief uh, and create some doubt or, or some edges of disbelief or, or shock in people of religion that says, well, maybe, maybe what I believe is false. Uh, very many atheists now are not hiding in the shadows, but creating a name for themselves, growing their number, uh, and making a lot of noise. You can see this, uh, again, Richard Dawkins' big book, The God Delusion, Christopher Hitchens' book, God is Not Great, Sam Harris's book, The End of Faith. These are all publications, definitely, that are trying to um, confront belief, condescend belief, and create consternation among believers. Uh, here in the United States, uh, lately, um, you know, the atheists, the American atheists, have been putting out these billboards. They did one at Christmas. They've done some other ones at a lot of different places. Um, this one is happening because there's a group putting billboards up talking about Judgment Day on May 21st, and then the American atheists responded with this one. You, you know it's nonsense, the rapture, right? Um, American atheists being sensible since 1963, not something you're used to seeing but something that's more and more prevalent. Uh, a lot of debates. This one is between Dinesh D'Souza and Christopher Hitchens. Uh, I've been to several debates between atheists and Christians, atheists and Muslims. Uh, this is another place where people uh, contend for belief or non-belief, as it were. They also are very active in the blogosphere. I've noticed that atheists, more than any other uh, person, are very active um, in internet-based discussions, you know, so if someone posts an article, say, on the CNN Belief blog, uh, you know, 75% of the comments are going to be atheists. Um, the other bit are going to be evangelical Christians. Uh, a strong majority of them are as well, but there are a lot of blogs from atheists out there, and often they're very well written, uh, and they're some of the best blogs um, out there. I, I follow quite a few, one of them being the Key of Atheists. Some of their exemplars, any heroic unbeliever, people who stepped out for unbelief, as far back as Epicurus and Lucretius, to Thomas Hobbes, of course, Charles Darwin being a notable uh, atheist, uh, although some people contend that fact. T.H. Huxley, uh, if Darwin was an atheist, T.H. Huxley, known as Darwin's bulldog, was definitely atheist. You've got other philosophers like Ludwig Feuerbach, uh, George Eliot, Friedrich Nietzsche, who famously quoted that God is dead. Uh, J.S. Mill, Karl Marx, uh, and his kind of uh, communist, um, Leninist type of view, or I shouldn't say Leninist, Leninist a very Marxist communism, uh, it was based on an idea that it was a society without God. Uh, and then George Holyoke, Mark Twain was even a skeptic, if not a, a full-fledged um, atheist. Uh, you also get Einstein saying, I have no need of that hypothesis, uh, although that's not verified that he said that. There's plenty of people who are, are said to have said uh, God is, is not a hypothesis they're in need of, but people say that um, definitely Einstein said that. Today there are, are the four horsemen of the new atheism, Richard Dawkins pictured here on the slide, Christopher Hitchens and Daniel Dennett, all three of them coming from the UK, and then their Amer American compatriot Sam Harris. Uh, now, again, do they have a creed, do they have a cultus, do they have a code, do they have a community? Creed, yeah, three denials, three defenses. They deny God, they deny revelation and faith, the sources of knowledge, they deny religion itself. Uh, they defend re reason and logic, uh, science and naturalism, and secularism as the basis of, of a good society and good humanity. Okay? Uh, so they take secularism beyond just general society and start to apply it to the individual life when they do that. Occultists. Um, you know, atheists are most notably known for their lack of practical expression and devotion, and yet they have it. So, that, you know, they're not going to church, because why go to church? They're not celebrating holidays, because why do we celebrate these holidays? Um, you know, but atheists, they have their own holidays, they have their own cultists. A uh, very largely celebrated high holy day of atheism is Darwin Day on February 12th. They've got speakers, they've got events, Richard Dawkins is always speaking on Darwin Day. Uh, Christopher Hitchens is often speaking on Darwin Day. They celebrate these things. They post it on their Facebook. They invite friends to attend. There's also Thomas Paine Day or, or Bertrand Russell Day. They've got their high holy days. They've also transformed traditionally uh, religious um, rites of passage into 
secular or humanist rites of passage. Instead of baptisms or christenings, they have naming ceremonies. Uh, instead of uh, the traditional religious weddings, they've got non-religious